We know that a lot of Americans are being affected right now, 53 million in fact, dealing with extreme and dangerous heat today. In Phoenix, they're looking at highs above 110 degrees for more than 18 days. Believe it or not, extreme heat kills more people in the U.S. than any other weather. So to help us understand the dangers, we do have our very own Dr. Pyle Coley here. Dr. Coley, thank you for joining us. Um, Jeff, take it away. Yeah, Dr. Coley, so let's get right into it. Why is extreme heat so dangerous, especially for older folks? Uh, you know, our body is a really fragile machine, guys, and it's really sensitive to cold temperatures and to hot temperatures. So to keep our organs running, there's only a couple of degrees that we can really vary. So when we're in extreme heat, our body can't regulate its temperature in the same way. Way. And when we're older, we lose the ability to regulate our temperature. Same actually for younger people or pregnant women. And so we very easily can become hyperthermic, which means wow. our body can go into a stress response. Our heart rate gets fast. Our breathing gets fast. Our basal metabolic rate can go up almost double. Well, you know, that makes me wonder because a lot of people that are caring or just maybe with somebody, how do you know if they're undergoing like extreme heat stress and like what are the warning signs that you should look for? And sometimes it can be really subtle, Al, so I'm glad you asked me that because especially with kids and, and older parents, even with ourselves sometimes, we just start to feel a little ill. You know, we get a little headachey, a little tired. We might get a little nauseated. That's kind of an early sign. Heed that warning because if you don't, what it progresses to is extreme obviously your body temperature goes up above 103 you're flushed uh, you get confused you become obtunded which means you're not responding to commands anymore so oftentimes you'll find I've seen people come into the hospital live alone they don't have air conditioning and they're just found down basically so when you say heat the warnings how do we cope and stay safe in extreme heat so this is really important so the most important thing is to hydrate 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 because the way that our body gives off heat is using sweat using water that evaporates and if we run out of water it's not going to be able to do that so hydrating even before you go out into the heat is really important limiting the time outside of course that's a no-brainer but also limiting what we're doing outside so exercising outside or spending a ton of time in the park running around with the dog can actually be maladaptive because those activities can also raise your body temperature as well and then of course being sure to cool off whether it's air conditioning or spritzing yourself with water if you don't have air conditioning and using a little pocket fan those are nice ways in which we can use our skin which is our biggest organ to essentially be our own air conditioner doc how good are you at scrabble <laughs> <laughs> you, you had some right. big words in there and i was like that's uh -huh. a triple words yeah, yeah, you don't let's go her. i'm gonna take you on <laughs> yeah. i think I, I, you, you got me I, I, I want yeah. to throw this at you really quickly if you're a person that doesn't drink water habitually some people are really good with drinking water if you're a person that's not like that which i'm assuming i'm not like that uh is there like something that you should remember like have a glass of water every two hours or something to look like is there a way to know that you're not going to be dehydrated. You look at your pee, Dr. Jackson. I was going to ask that, but then I was like, I didn't know. If See, I... now you're talking my language. Yes. On, honestly. So what color should your urine be if you're hydrated? Clear. Clear. Or very light, light yellow. yellow. And if you're, and the volume is the other piece that gives you sort of the clue. So if you have dark yellow pee coming out, you are falling behind. You have already fallen behind. And we talked about older people. In fact, older people don't have a thirst mechanism that triggers in the same way. So they don't even realize that they're thirsty. Scary. And that's one of the reasons. And then they can be on medications and such as well, which can set them up for dehydration. Mm. Stay on top of it. Um, okay, so I got to ask you, because a lot of people are curious, there's some new safety concerns regarding the popular weight loss drug, drug Ozempic. We've talked about it on the show. Well, the EU is saying that it could cause suicidal thoughts. Yes, yes. And so, you know, this is very concerning to me as a physician because we're starting to launch this drug kind of on a population level. So if there's even a small signal or potential for something like this, we really need to pay attention before we get it out there. And in fact, the US FDA has even put in its warnings to monitor for signs of suicidality or depression because in the clinical trials, the people that got, you know, this kind of drug had a slightly higher signal, not significantly higher, but a slightly higher signal than the ones that got placebo for having these kind of suicidal thoughts. And, you know, we've talked about it on the show before, but it can change the way our reward center in the brain works. And so it changes the way in which we feel happiness, engagement, dopamine is our happiness chemical. So what we really need to watch out for is whether these off-target effects are going to be maladaptive or not. So, Doc, let me ask you this. So we have Ozempic. There's multiple other drugs on the market now. One saying it's even 25% better or whatever. I, I don't want to talk about that. What I want to talk about is why aren't we pushing more just healthy eating? 
instead of all these drugs, we're trying to find a way to combat that, but we're not talking about healthy eating anymore. Well, I would push back, Jeff, and say it doesn't have to be one or the other, because it is part of a comprehensive program. Absolutely, healthy eating and exercise and lifestyle are the right way to go. These drugs are for people who have done that, and then they've hit a wall, and they're still obese, and they're still having the health complications associated with obesity. It is not a replacement. Right, but if you're having suicidal thoughts, and who knows what, because they're, they're new drugs, basically, and who knows what these other side effects are. Why, when we promote these, why are we also promoting, but we also suggest a healthy lifestyle style as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm completely with you. And when I talk to my patients, I wrote this for a few patients yesterday. The first conversation I had is, what are you doing for diet and exercise? But here's the, the, the challenge. A lot of people that are obese, they have bad arthritis. They can't get off the sofa. The minute they try to walk around and exercise in the park, they get winded because they're carrying all this extra yeah. weight around. So part of it is helping them break that cycle. But really, I cannot emphasize enough, yeah. and I'm glad you asked me this. It has to be all three. It's a three-legged stool. Medications, diet and you know nutrition and then exercise how what? Nothing. I was listening. Thank you so much, Dr. Coley, for stopping <laughs> what? by. I, What's what going on with you? you two today? You. What did I do? Did I miss something? No. You missed it. Down here, Doc. <laughs> we We're having it. a good conversation. <laughs> Dr. Coley has a podcast uh, with a look into the life of a doctor. Check out Heart of Medicine wherever you get your podcast. Thank you so much, Dr. Coley, as always.